Hello everyone. Welcome to Learning with Friends. Today we are going to discuss ratio and proportion. What exactly do we mean by a ratio? A ratio is a relationship of various items in terms of their quantity. For example, suppose there is a room with two tables and eight chairs. Then we may say that the ratio of the number of tables to the number of chairs is 2 is to 8. Ratios can be represented as fractions. Thus another way of expressing the above ratio is 2 divided by 8 which is equal to 1 upon 4. Thus the ratio of the number of tables to the number of chairs in the room in the simplest form is 1 is to 4. If we were to speak of the ratio of the number of chairs to the total number of furniture items in the room, then the ratio would be 8 divided by 8 plus 2, since there are 8 chairs and 2 tables, which becomes 8 divided by 10, which is 4 divided by 5 or 4 is to 5. A ratio can also be expressed as a percentage. For example, we can say that chairs constitute 4 upon 5, which converted to a percentage is 80% of the furniture items in the room. Let's look at a few word problems related to ratios. Word problem first. The ratio of the number of rats to guinea pigs in a laboratory is 3 is to 4. When 5 guinea pigs are added to the population, the ratio becomes 3 is to 5. What was the original population of the laboratory? To solve this question, we have to first assume a few variables. Since the ratio of the rats to guinea pigs in the original population is 3 is to 4, let the original number of rats be 3x and let the original number of guinea pigs be 4x. When 5 guinea pigs are added, the new number of guinea pigs will become 4x plus 5. This new ratio of rats to guinea pigs is given as 3 is to 5, which means that our equation becomes 3x divided by 4x plus 5 is equal to 3 divided by 5. Cross multiplying we get 5 multiplied by 3x is equal to 3 multiplied by within brackets 4x plus 5. On expanding we get 15x is equal to 12x plus 15. Bringing like terms to one side, we get 3x is equal to 15 or x is equal to 5. Now that we have x, we can find the original population of rats and guinea pigs in the laboratory. The original population of rats in the laboratory was 3x, which is 3 into 5, 15 and the original population of guinea pigs in the laboratory was 4x, which is 4 into 5 or 20. Therefore, the total original population of the laboratory would be 15 plus 20 or 35. Let's look at a slightly tougher ratio problem. In a mixture of milk and water measuring 200 ml, the ratio of milk to water is 3 is to 1. For the purpose of the experiment Dana is conducting, the ratio of milk to water needs to be 3 is to 2. How much of which liquid should Dana add to the mixture to get the desired ratio? How do we solve this question? Let's first find out the amount of milk and water in the original mixture. Since the ratio of milk to water in the original mixture is 3 is to 1, the amount of milk would be 3 divided by 3 plus 1 multiplied by the volume of the original mixture, which is 200. Therefore, the amount of milk becomes 3 divided by 4 into 200, which is 150 ml. Similarly, the amount of water in the original mixture would be 1 divided by 4 into 200, which is 50 ml. The desired ratio of milk to water is given to us as 3 is to 2, which is 3 upon 2 or 1.5. Thus, the ratio of milk to water has dropped from 3 to 1.5. This means that water will have to be added to the original mixture to obtain the desired ratio. Let the quantity of water to be added in milliliters be x. 
then the new quantity of water in the mixture would be 50 plus x because 50 ml was the original amount of water in the mixture. Since the desired ratio of milk to water is 1.5, we have the equation 150 divided by 50 plus x is equal to 1.5. Cross multiplying we get 150 is equal to 1.5 multiplied by within brackets 50 plus x or 150 is equal to 75 plus 1.5 x. On further solving we get the value of x as 50. Thus if we add 50 ml of water to the original mixture the ratio of milk to water will become 3 is to 2. Let's do a quick check. The original amount of milk in this mixture was 150 ml and the new amount of water after adding 50 ml becomes 100 ml and 150 upon 100 is indeed 3 is to 2. Let's now look at a related concept, proportion. Proportion defines the relationship between two quantities. It could be direct proportion or inverse proportion. Let's discuss direct proportion. Whenever A increases, B increases by the same ratio. We denote this as A proportional to B, which implies that A divided by B is a constant K. Let's now look at inverse proportion. When A increases, B decreases by the same ratio. We denote this as A proportional to 1 upon B, which implies that A multiplied by B is a constant K. Let's now look at a word problem related to direct proportion. If 2 pounds of peaches cost $5, then how many pounds of peaches can be purchased for $13? This is a simple example of direct proportion. Let the amount of peaches that can be purchased for $13 be x. Since there is a direct relationship between money spent and peaches purchased, we have 2 upon 5 is equal to x upon 13. Cross multiplying, we get x is equal to 26 upon 5 or 5.2 pounds. Therefore, $13 can buy 5.2 pounds of peaches. Let's also look at an inverse proportion word problem. If three boys can finish painting a wall in 8 hours, how long will it take for six boys to finish painting the same wall? Since the quantum of work is the same, increasing the number of boys will lead to a reduction in the time taken to finish the job. This indicates an inverse relationship between the number of boys and the time taken to paint the wall. Let the number of hours taken by six boys to paint the wall be x. Since the quantum of work is the same, 3 multiplied by 8 should be equal to 6 multiplied by x or x becomes 24 by 6 which is 4 hours. Thus, 6 boys will take 4 hours to paint the wall. Let's do a quick check. If it takes 3 boys 8 hours to paint the wall, it will take 1 boy 8 multiplied by 3 or 24 hours to paint the same wall. Therefore, it will take 6 boys, 24 divided by 6, or 4 hours to paint the wall. That's all for now friends. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel Learning with Friends. Also don't forget to share this video. Do let us know in the comment section what other math topics you would like us to discuss in future videos. See you next time.